This is Reb Brad, and you're listening to the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from The Touchline. We're in the midst of an interview series with Adam Smith. It's actually the last installment of a four-part series. Adam is the sporting director for Central Valley Fuego FC, a USL League One team in Fresno, California. As a former pro player and goalkeeper, I've nicknamed this series Jesus Saves. And it's not because of any pun or anything. It's because some of the threads and themes that are visible and audible in Adam's story, well, they're pretty powerful and poignant. Today, Adam shares more about his role with Fuego, but he also takes a moment to answer a very personal question of where he might feel he would be without Jesus. It's a poignant part of the podcast and the interview as a whole. We end on a lighter note as Adam gets between the posts for a game of crosses with Rev. So don't go anywhere. We get cracking right after this. He's found the space and he's found the back of the net. Just a little off foot thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post. Almost made him in. And they have. He has the hat trick. The second in his career. The third of the night. The hat trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner. Goes towards the near post. And you're on the angle. And what a goal. What a goal. Yeah, well, actually, a great, a great tie in, Adam, because I recently was, I probably was on LinkedIn. Um, and I saw that uh, Fuego uh, actually have a sizable footprint according to this one person that was putting together sort of the different soccer footprints of different teams um, from MLS, USL Championship, USL League One on the men's side. And it seemed like Fuego have quite a bit of area of influence. So I I am curious, how is Fuego is where you're at now. So where where how is the club, how How's the region kind of adapting to or or adopting this uh, this new iteration of football? Well, for anyone listening that, that doesn't know the area, so I, I do I do think Fresno is a soccer town. We don't really have a ton of sports to compete with. We're we're, we're not a, a huge market, you know. We're we're a, we're a small big town, if that makes sense, in in the middle of California. Um, Fuego has a history. I mean, it's been around for. I believe 20 odd years, you know, it's always been a very successful PDL or, or league two as it is now USL league two club that, that had always had a decent sized fan base, always done pretty well, produced a lot of good players and tried to do things very professionally for an amateur, for an amateur team. Um, when Fresno FC came in and, and the league said, Hey, we, you know, we want a USL championship team in that market. You know, they, they bought, Fresno FC bought Fuego so and rebranded and made the name Fresno FC, you know, changed everything, which that was a, a tough piece for many people in this community to, to, to deal with at the beginning because, you know, they've had this team for so many years. Okay, they want professional soccer, so they're, they're embracing the fact that someone's prepared to, to put money behind something. But now the colors are changing, the badge is changing, mm-hmm. the name is changing. Yeah, yeah. So, but to be fair, by year two, that, that – I think people have got over that and everyone was really behind Fresno FC. Um, and, you know, when the new owner came in, obviously he wanted to put his stamp on things and, 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 and change it. Um, and I think it was a, it was a good idea to, to bring the Fuego name back again. Um, but obviously uh, the, the league that, that they went in was not championship it was league one, which is a growing league. And um, it's a full-time professional league. It's a good league. Uh, the the only negative for for Fuego at the moment is that the most of the teams I think our nearest away game is Colorado, hmm. um, and that's you know that's I think where the team is there is is an hour or two maybe east from you or west from you. I yeah, it's north. It's north actually. Yeah, okay. yeah. So um, you know, and after that, most of the teams are on the on the east coast or you know uh, dotted around that side of the country. So it, it does make it challenging. We're hoping that. You know, Spokane can kick into gear. That that yep. the, um, Santa Barbara can, can kick into gear. Perhaps a team in, in in Eugene, Oregon, as well. And I mean, these are once we start to get more teams on this side of the uh, of the country, it will become easier. And but there is still, you know, in answer to your question, I think there's still 
I've, I've used the term growing pains, but I really think there is because, you know, there's fractions within the supporters base. People have, people have moved on to different things. And I, I, I do believe that over time and, and given some success on the field as well, that, that we'll be back to where we were, but it, it is, it is proving more challenging than I think anybody, anybody thought it would. Um, and I can't quite put my finger on why, but, um, you know, we, the Open Cup game, there was there was a packed house. You know, it's a smaller stadium we're at now. We're playing out at Fresno State instead of the, the baseball stadium downtown and um, it holds just under 4,000. And it was great to see a full house on uh, on Wednesday despite the result. Now we've got to find a way to try and keep those people engaged and keep them coming back for our regular league sure. games. Obviously, there was a little bit more on it on Wednesday because it was against Monterey. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, uh, it's it's funny how small the football world is and how the paths cross. Um, yeah, it's just amazing how that happens. Adam, uh, your role right now with Fuego, you're you're the sporting director. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so you know, I had I had um, hoped to when the you know I I kind of been a little bit instrumental in trying to get the team off the ground. I'd worked with the league and. And different things to uh, to 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 bring uh, professional soccer back to uh, back to Fresno, and um, you know I had a, a friend of mine, a colleague who was kind of a business partner as well, and we 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 we, we helped you know get it together, and uh, without going into too much detail, but my hope with that really was not not so much to to, to do a business transaction, but was to get a job um, in any capacity within within the new football club and it, it didn't happen um mm. so again that was a that was okay god <laughs> what's going on here you know my family's here we're settled here and uh you know what well, i've managed to get this team back but i don't have a job out of it which what you know what am i missing um but i didn't you know obviously an owner has a choice to do whatever he wants with his own football club and so i i ended up taking a a league two job Ironically, which is obviously a you know a big step down you know from where I had, I had been working, um, but it was with a, a good organisation called Ventura Fusion, and they'd been on a hiatus because of COVID and wanted to get their their League Two team up and running again, get a staff together and players together. So I helped, you know, helped with that, um, helped rebuild some of their youth club components as well. And um, they obviously had a really successful year last year, you know, winning the League Two um, championship. So I was really pleased for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I did get the phone call eventually from Fuego. It was it was almost a year ago. It was April of last year. And uh, and they um, they said, look, we we have a head coach, um, but we 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 the they had a strange situation where they've hired somebody and. Um, without going into too much detail, they'd hired them as a sporting director and a head coach, but that person didn't want to stay with the organization or, or something had gone on. And then the the new head coach that they brought in did not want to be a sporting director. He just wanted to coach the team. And obviously Martin Vasquez has got experience in, you know, in MLS and USL and he, he, he knew what he wanted to do. And, uh, and, and so they said, look, we still need a sporting director and we still need one specifically that has, got experience in, in building programs underneath the first team in addition to you know to, to other qualities that you can bring to the table um so i was just grateful to be offered a job whether it had been sporting director head coach assistant coach or t-boy or kit man even maybe <laughs> i don't know um i'd have be i'd have jumped at it because sure. it saved me driving up and down the freeway every week and uh, my family was here so took the job and uh, you know it's still evolving um i'm really being focused on on at the moment on building a, a u19s team that will be like our reserve stroke stroke academy and then we'll we'll, we'll see where see what happens from there but that's kind of been the role that i've uh, i've been i've been doing and i i've been getting my coaching fixed by actually you know it's a hybrid model but actually coaching we just went to the usl showcase cup in florida and we took third spot in that, which was great. And we just thrown these guys together from like 13 different, different youth clubs throughout the Valley. 
and uh, they came together for this event, did really, really well. And I, I, you know, I was back on the, on the pitch working with them. So that gave me my coach a fix. And now I can take a respite from that, come back and get my administration fixed. If <laughs> That's really a good <laughs> turn. Like, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Adam, thank you so much for, uh, yeah, just giving us a, a great uh, sense of where life faith football where that's all kind of intertwined and led you and uh yeah so glad to see you um in this spot and and coming on the podcast today is really really enjoyed and, you know i was going through some of my notes and i'm like we're, we're just gonna have to save this for another podcast but uh i i go back to 2019 and uh, uh being at the convention the coaches convention in chicago and and uh yeah, talking about character, and so uh, I th I think we're going to have to have another podcast where we talk about character in the locker room. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. No, it was, yeah, that was, yeah, that was a an honor as well to be asked to to present on on your panel and uh, yeah. Ben's panel, and I was I was very grateful for that. But yeah, yeah. That was, seems well, a long time ago now. It, it does. <laughs> it it seems forever and an age ago. But we'll have to get back into it and talk about character. I I do think. Um, kind of my, my last question before we move on and transition is, um, you know, you, you talked about the team folding being, you know, literally devastating, very difficult. Um, where, where do you think you are today if that happens and you don't have your faith in Jesus? Like what happens to you? What happens to your family, your, your mentality, your, your heart, like if you don't have your faith in Jesus, cause you said, you know, this is tremendously, tremendously difficult. Um, you guys were really at the top, the top of the, the peak and out of nowhere comes this news. What do you think happens without Jesus? I don't think you recover from it. If, if I'm honest and I, and I think it's taken me, a lot longer than I've actually realized and having an opportunity to come on here and, and talk today with you is, is, is that's, I guess it's a form of counseling in a way because it's actually helping me, you know, just sort of discuss it and, and, and own it. Um, I, I do know this. And again, I don't want to sound cliche, but 100% without him, we wouldn't have got through as a family. Mm -hmm. He provided. Uh, so we, we, you know, in many different ways we were provided for, because obviously you start worrying about finances and, and things like that. So number one, he provided. Um, number two, I know he was there with me when I was in, you know, in some dark times and, 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 and not happy and maybe not being the best dad or the best husband. And I'm a human being, you know, I make mistakes, but I, I just know that, I, you know, there were, periods where I probably wasn't nice to be around if, if, if I'm honest and mm. there weren't many of them but they they, they certainly were, were there uh, you should probably have a podcast with my wife she might be able to tell you a bit more <laughs> yeah. um, but she was hugely supportive my family were hugely supportive my kids were, were brilliant I, I do look back and see the, the positives that have come out of COVID as well with the actual amount of family time you have and, and different things like that and the time you have to reflect but I was was actually reflecting. I'm reading your your World Cup devotional at the moment. I've, you know, I think I've just finished the chapter on on, on joy and peace. And mm. and the 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 thing that hit home to me was, I think I lost a little bit of inner peace. Um, mm. Not right after the everything happened because you you think you're going to walk into another job because you've been successful and then doors close and things don't happen and um and then again if covid hits and what have you but i you know i'd had a and i remember when that piece came to me it was it was back at my time in in, in, in wilmington as well i really understood what you know having god's peace in your heart is and i think i started to i always knew god was still there i knew he was right by my side when, when i was going through these tough times but um i started to lose that peace and mm. right now it's it's coming back again and uh it's taken a long time but um i just you know without having god i i don't know if i would have been able to come out the other side and start feeling it again if if, if i'm truly honest 
Yeah. Adam, thanks for being honest and, and vulnerable with that. Cause I know that's, that's not an easy place to be in. And, you know, even, even for myself, um, you know, as I've walked with countless people, athletes, coaches, staff, who they get that news and the news is, could be anything. It could be the team's folding, or it could be, uh, you're fired, you're out, here's the box, collect your things and we'll escort you. Or it, or it could be the contract's been revoked or the contract never got signed. And, and, and it's so unsettling. I think many people look at football or other kind of elite sport and they think, all right, you know, it's, it's easy. It's dreamy. It's, it's cush. It's, it's a lifestyle. And, and certainly some of that maybe gets reflected in, in some of the more elite people that make tons of money, but, but in different places, we don't realize the impact that it has when someone moves their family to a different country. And then all of a sudden, what you thought was a long-term um, possibility becomes short term and, and you're moving again, or you're, uh, you're without that, that contract, you're without that job, or you get the, the diagnosis that says you'll never play again. Or, and, and that can be one of the most unsettling places and feelings whether you're a person of faith or not. And, and fortunately though, people of faith, um, have Jesus, they, and they can lean into that. It's those that don't that end up in a dark place where, um, they, they cope, they try to cope in many different ways. They, they turn to drugs and alcohol or, they, or they turn to many different things. And so, um, it, it doesn't mean that life is any easier as a Christian person, but uh, we have someone, we have a high priest who's gone before us and he understands it and he's there with us and provides for us as, as we have need. So thank you, Adam, for sharing your story and, and being vulnerable to, to talk about probably a couple of the most difficult things you've gone through in your life, you know, on, on a podcast. So appreciate you sharing that. And uh, that's, that's been a gift to us all. Oh, thank you to you for being a friend and, and a brother. And, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity today to, to talk and share. And, uh, you know, hopefully someone's out there listening and they can sympathize as well. And uh, we, we move on. So I, I appreciate yeah. it. And, yeah. Um, I look forward to chatting with you very, very soon. Yeah, well, we'll do uh, before we hang up, we'll, we'll do crosses with revs. Oh, yes. So, crosses yeah. with revs. That's yeah. right. We'll Go switch on. gears and and emerge from the the difficult place and have a little bit of fun now so so let me tell you about the game adam it's a, it's a crosses with rev it's like a finishing drill if you can imagine you know the the picture is you know serving a ball in and someone's first time just hitting it hitting it on frame so since you're a goalkeeper i mean your job is really just to field these questions field as many questions in a minute's time as you can and every question has an answer, but really only you and I know, or someone who does some really good research will know the right answer. Um, so it's a 60 second game and I have a timer here on my iPhone so that it I have will, no idea what to expect. Right it now, will take, it will, okay. So there's, there's two types of questions. There's an either, or it's worth one point and there's a fill in the blank, complete the sentence kind of thing. That's worth three points. And Again, the goal, answer as many questions as you can. If a question's too tough, and there might be some tough questions in here for you, you can say pass. And if you do, you lose out on the points for that question. So uh, I'll give you a, a couple questions as a warm-up, uh, just so you get a sample, and it, it helps you get ready, okay? Okay. So uh, I'll ask you something like, Man U or Man City? Neither. Come on. Okay, so... <laughs> Yeah. Can so you answer that, or is that a pass? Yep. No, neither is is legitimate because you know maybe as Liverpool or an Evertonian, like you have to say that. So neither is an acceptable answer. But I'm going to give you these like options. Uh, some of them might be controversial though, and that's where you go pass. Like right, I've I've had a couple other coaches on, and and I might you know uh, I I think one was uh, Steve Guppy at one time, and I asked him uh, Gary Smith or um, uh, Martin O'Neill. And he was like, oh, oh, pass, you know, cause he's like, I, I can't say yeah. either or, you know, like he, he's tied <laughs> to both. So, um, uh, here's, 
Yeah, here's an example of a of a fill in the blank. I might say my favorite band is, and you just fill it in. Okay. Okay. I've got you. So, yeah. so I'm not going to ask those questions, right? Because those those are just my my uh, preemptive uh, test. I, you I out. I have questions. to say the Beatles, wouldn't I? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah what no, I right. Say. You and you can. So <laughs> so where I've seen people do the best is if they don't take too long to think about it and they just gut reaction. So, right, the the ball's flying in at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, and you're just – it's reaction. It's pure reaction. And a um, couple other things. So I will not start the timer until the first question I've asked it. And then if I begin the question before the timer ends, you, I'll, I'll finish it and you can still answer it, right? So it's a little – you know, there's a little injury time that gets, that gets played out in this one minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Do you feel ready? Do you feel ready? I feel ready. I okay. Think so. well, here, here we go. Here we go. First question. Left footed or right? Right. My favorite football club is? Everton. Rough rider or hammerhead? I have to pass on that one. I like both. Coach or play? Coach now. USSA A or UEFA A? UEFA A. Portland Timbers or Sac Republic? Ooh, Timbers. Dribble or pass? Pass. Everton or Chelsea? Everton. My favorite post-game meal is? Fish and chips in a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Precky or Spinny? Oh... Oh, I got to pass on that one too. USL Ch National Championship or USL Coach of the Year nominee? Uh, championship. 442 or 443? No 443, is it? You need 433. Oh, 433. <laughs> <laughs> 442. Uh, all right. Oh, time's up. Sorry. And I, <laughs> oh man, I totally botched that because I. <laughs> Fat fingered that <laughs> question. Well, I should have said right, four four right, three. Really... It gives me what it gives me one extra player on the yeah, pitch. It does. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um oh. all right. Well let let me I'm gonna give you uh one more question. Bonus question. Bonus question since I messed that up. I'll give that to you. You said four four two. And I will have to go back and and see what did I do there? Um, I think the last guy I had four five one. So I'm in the hurry. I might have yeah added an extra field player. But um, Cambridge or Colchester? Cambridge. Nice, nice. Um, I was going to ask you a few others. So, so I'll give that uh, here. Let me let me add up your tally up your points. So you had a pass. Let's see. I had two passes. I think didn't I? Yeah, oh, yeah, you did. You did. Yeah, fifteen points. So you you finished just below just below below uh, Steve Guppy. He came on a couple years ago, um, and we we played this. So yeah, it's 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 got to go quick. But fish and chips, I I love that one. That's the first time anyone said that. You're an Evertonian. That's through and through. We we can see that. Um, for sure, my my Tacoma chaplain will will love you for sure because he's a, he's a big Everton fan. Um, oh, let me ask you this: Guardiola or Klopp? Klopp. Okay. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Hmm. Yeah. What do you what do you think? You think Messi gets over here to the U.S.? I don't know. I'd like to see it. Lots of rumors. Well, it, maybe maybe he'll take the money and go to go to Saudi Arabia or wherever it is. And now oh, those guys crazy, well. right? Crazy, very yeah. crazy. All right. Well, Adam, thanks. I, I want to close out the pod by just uh, just a quick prayer uh, for you, for Fuego, and for League One, and uh, just everything that we've shared today. So, uh, if you would, uh, God, thank you for Adam Smith. Thank you for his story, his life, the things you've brought him through, the things you've brought him to. Thank you for uh, giving him a great partner in Vanessa and his wife and just the 
the things, the, the heights and the valleys that you've, you've walked with them through. And so I just pray a blessing for, for Fuego, for Adam's work there, for League One as their season uh, begins to unfold more fully. And, and I just pray that uh, for all that you have in store, that, that you would use a culmination of Adam's background and experience, his faith, his football, his entire journey to bless and to touch and reach out to others. So thanks for the moments of coaching and playing and directing and, and managing and uh, administrating. And I just pray a blessing on him and everything that he, he puts his hands to. And, and God, thanks for this moment. Thanks for this time. We give you the praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Amen. Rev. Yeah. Great to see you, man. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll follow up with you soon. I'm just about to dive into, believe it or not, another podcast. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> well, thanks for taking the time today. This has been Rev Brad and Adam Smith coming to you from the Touchline. What a great interview series with Adam. And again, I think very fitting to entitle it Jesus Saves. Hopefully I'll be forgiven for messing up the crosses with Rev. But friends, I just want to tell you, it doesn't matter if you're a footballing athlete, coach, or have some other executive or administrative place in the game. There's likely going to come a time when the world crashes in around you. The injury ends a season or a career. The team folds. The wage bill gets slashed or the contract gets reneged or it could be a hundred other things. If you don't have a foundation of faith, if you don't realize that Jesus saves, well, at least for Adam and for me, he makes all the difference. Join us next week. We start another interview series, but this time with a guy who's been on the podcast before, Wells Thompson. Bye for now. This is Rev Brad coming to you from the Touchline.